because of economic pressures, because of the threat to many people's health, and in many other ways, this pandemic has, of course, changed many, many aspects of everyone's lives. And we're going to look now at how it's affected women in particular. This article in The Guardian has gone as far as to declare the pandemic is destroying women's rights. And whilst that might be an extreme way of describing it, there's an increasingly increasing body of evidence supporting the idea that, as a group, women are being particularly adversely affected. First, there's domestic violence. The UN has called the increase in domestic violence globally the shadow pandemic. It says across the world, domestic violence helplines and shelters are reporting rising calls for help. Professionally, women seem to be at a disadvantage too. This article in the science journal Nature says preliminary data suggest that across disciplines, women's publishing rate has fallen relative to men's amid the pandemic. Whilst analysis of households with two opposite gender parents from the Institute of Fiscal Studies in the UK has suggested that compared to fathers, mothers are more likely to have quit or lost their job or to have been furloughed. They're also spending less time on paid work, but more time on household responsibilities. A separate study from the University of Sheffield found that the proportion of mothers responsible for most of a family's childcare increased from 27% to 45% during lockdown. Medically too, there are some issues that affect women disproportionately. For example, women across Europe are being denied abortions because of the pandemic. The World Health Organization classifies abortion as essential health care, but the BBC has found hospitals that have stopped performing the procedure during the pandemic. And the BBC's Jean McKenzie has been looking at that issue. As the pandemic hit, hospitals across the world have been forced to suspend non-emergency surgeries but in Romania, nearly all of them stopped abortions. This is a phone call made to a hospital last month. Bună ziua, vreau să vă întreb dacă mă pot programa pentru o întrerupere de sarcină la dumneavoastră hospital. Nu se fac întrerupere de sarcină. Nu se fac din data de 23 martie. Nu se fac. At the height of the crisis, only 11 out of the 280 hospitals in Romania were offering the procedure. They are trying to use the pandemic as an excuse. Lots of women, especially the ones that are coming from vulnerable ba backgrounds that are living in poverty, could not access uh, an abortion. This is how desperate the situation is. My boyfriend tricked me. He pretending he was using a condom. I can't afford to have a child. Daria couldn't find a single doctor to give her an abortion. So I was recommended someone who was retired who said that I could have an abortion at their home. I went to their apartment. They they had this special room and, and the bed. I was very afraid. It was done using a vacuum, which I wasn't expecting. It's a similar story in countries across Europe. We've spoken to women in Italy, Croatia and Poland who've all been unable to get treatment. In these countries, it was already difficult for women to get an abortion, and this crisis has just put more obstacles in their way. There are fewer clinics offering the procedure now, and of course, women have been unable to travel to seek out alternatives. In Slovakia, where there have been recent attempts to restrict abortion, politicians have warned women against having the procedure. Very important people in the healthcare system in Slovakia said that this is not acute and urgent medicine and that this is not the right time for women to undergo abortion. How do you respond to that as a clinician? This is not true from the medical point of view. Are you recommending women not to have abortions during this time? No, not at all. I just say if it's too dangerous from epidemiologic point of view and you can wait, of course you can wait. I didn't say don't go for it. Human rights organisations are now urging all governments in Europe to make sure abortions are safely available. Daria is still worrying about her back street procedure. I'm, I'm still bleeding. I don't think I'm, I'm badly injured, but I'm worried there might be something wrong. And there's concern that in some places, access to abortion may never return to what it was before this pandemic. G. McKenzie, BBC News.